wealth, yoga, wine. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Valerie Hale. Your mind is a jumping monkey. And how to tether your thoughts, specifically of fear, doubt, and worry. Mary Morrissey tells us that in Southeast Asia, they are very well aware of the mind thinking to be like a jumping monkey. And they understand that these runaway thoughts that we have have to be tethered. There are three quick steps to tether these thoughts of fear, doubt, and worry. Mary teaches us that number one, notice what you're noticing. That means notice your thoughts. During the day, are you employing words like, I can't get a promotion, I can't change careers because it's still the pandemic, I don't have enough money ever, which leads to fear, doubt, and worry. We all have these. What you want to do in training your jumping monkey mind is to stop these thoughts. So while you're noticing this, the next step you're going to do, which Mary teaches us, and I love this, you're going to stomp your foot and say, I interrupt this broadcast for a vitally important new way thinking. What you're going to do is insert much more positive statements. I am making a career change. I am creating more money in my life. I am, I have, I decided to. Anytime you take one of these simple positive statements, it will kick out the negative fear, worry, and doubt. Yes, you have to repeat them all day long. Yes, it takes practice. But they're simple, and it's easy to start this. You can also employ something when you're starting to have those fear, doubts, and worry thoughts. Just simply say, I'll pick you up later. Mary says to wait three days. For me, I'm actually fending off foreclosure, and I will win. When I tell myself I'll pick you up later, I find a way to straddle another hurdle and and get on with it and find another way to resolve it. So it's simple to stop the fear, doubt, and worry. It just takes practice and you have to notice that you've gone down that negative rabbit hole. Price Pritchett also tells us to tap down the negative. Now this, this is the guy who's famous for mergers and acquisitions in corporations also famous for the book called You Squared and the philosophy and the practice of quantum leaps. When you stop this negative thinking and employ the I am, I decided to, I have, you're taking quantum leaps. You're beginning that process and opening yourself to unique opportunities. Lastly, Price Pritchett tells us 90%, this is what research has shown, 90% of what we worry and have fears about and doubts it doesn't even occur. Look, for, look at Simone Biles, for example, when she was in Tokyo at the Olympics. She had the twisties. Now this is something, and she'll tell you, has everything to do with mind thinking. And she bowed out of just about every session because she felt mentally she couldn't do it. This was about her mental health, and she told everybody. Yeah, she got a lot of backhand slaps from not too intelligent people, but she came out still winning a medal, pretty darn amazing. What was interesting about this process for her was that the Japanese allowed her to go into a private gym will go into the Olympic gym privately and practice over and over and over so she could be mentally balanced again. So if a 23-year-old who's a gold medal Olympic winner can harness this jumping money, (laughs) excuse me, jumping monkey, we can do the same thing with our life's opportunities and challenges. For those of us who wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning because we are tethering the jumping monkey, 
Bryce Pritchett also says, when you remember that 90% of your fears, doubt, and worries never occur. The other 5%, the less, the less impact was, was not what you thought, meaning the impact was less than what you thought. The other third aspect, that 5%, is that we have found a way to really manage this unique opportunity, which can be challenging. Therefore, when we wake up at 3 a.m. and we have these fear, doubts, and worries, one of the best ways to challenge your fear, doubt, and worries is through breathing. Mary teaches us a very simple breath that's calming and opens your, your brain to more oxygen. You can breathe easier and think easier and start to have better thought patterns so you can go back to sleep. You inhale slowly for the count of nine. You hold your breath to the count of four. You exhale to the count of nine and you hold your breath to the count of four. You start that process again. You inhale to the count of nine slowly. You hold your breath to the count of four. You exhale to the count of nine. You hold your breath to the count of four. Two aspects. As I said, it does clear your mind of doubt and worry. It takes, takes a minute or two, but also it's easier to fall asleep because you're concentrating on this crazy breath because this breath takes practice also. And with Kundalini Yoga, our next topic, they teach left nostril breathing. This is really good also to do at 3 a.m. in the morning when you're taming that jumping monkey of negative thoughts. Left nostril breathing is exactly that. You're breathing only through your left nostril. And how you do that is you place your right finger on your right nostril. If you're lying down, and you probably are if you're waking up at 3 a.m., so lay on your right side or you can lay on your back, press your your finger or even your thumb against your right nostril softly though not, not not you know don't hurt yourself and breathe very slowly in and out through your left nostril this breathing is also really good to do for instead of a timeout for your kids you can have them just sit down somewhere and practice this breath when those temper tantrums might be coming about you can teach a two-year-old this Kundalini Yoga is all about opening the neuro pathways, and that's when we get the dopamine, oxytocin, those serotonin, all those wonderful, happy hormones come into play. And that's why it's so important for me to impress people to practice Kundalini Yoga and work with my mentors, Mary Morsi and Matt Boggs. Lastly, wine. I talked last week about champagne and how it's so misunderstood, especially by Americans, because they feel as though anything that bubbles is champagne. I talked enough about that, but I wanted to clarify about why champagne is at the price it is, why it's so unique, and why it is so darn special. The technique that I believe makes it extremely special is the riddling. Your first fermentation is very typical with most wine production. Once the first fermentation is completed, the French will do what's called a dosage. And the champagne bottles are open, and I call it a secret sauce. But the dosage is a liqueur, and it's added to the wine, and then and with the yeast, a little bit of yeast, and then it's corked again, not with a permanent cork, and then it's riddled every day for about a year. So it takes about two years to produce a good bottle of champagne. Krug takes five years. That's expensive inventory. The riddling, um, Rimeu, is done by hand and it's simply turned a quarter of an inch every day. It's, it's, it's told, I've been told that it's 40,000 at the minimum bottles that the Rimeu is handling every day. And that's one of the reasons Champagne is so unique, so elegant, such a beautiful, beautiful experience. Now, Champagne versus Prosecco, which is really Champagne in America, it's, it's the major competitor. 
but they're too different. It's like it's like having Nike versus kids. <laughs> kids is for everybody. Nike is yeah for those who really really want quality. Prosecco is made in a much different way, and it's made much quicker. Prosecco can be made within mere months. It is not even fermented in the typical way that Champagne is, but it is fermented. It's a still wine to begin with. It's in steel tanks, but it goes through its fermentation process. Once it's ready to be made into Prosecco, carbon dioxide is infused by a machine. That's how the bubbles are created. Then it's bottled and it's shipped out. Now, good Prosecco can go up to $20, $25, and there's some that are in the Bardia that are absolutely exquisite. So that's the major points on why Champagne is at the price it is and why Prosecco is very easy to, easy to produce. That clears it up for everybody. To wrap this up, tether your junkie, <laughs> tether your jumping monkey by noticing your negative thoughts, that negative rabbit hole, when you start thinking, I can't, I don't, I don't have, stop that broadcast. Infuse it with positive and really focus on what you would really, truly love to have happen in your life. I am the thing that I love saying over and over to myself, I'm doing this, I'm doing this thing. And there you go, that'll kick those crazy fear, doubt, and negative worries to the curb. Kundalini Yoga teaches us very calming breaths to take. You can do this all day long. Probably wouldn't do it while I'm driving a car. But it will also help you clear those negative pathways so you can tap down the negative, as Price Pritchett says. When you tap down the negative, you are bringing in more room for all those positive good things to happen to you. And lastly... Champagne has a place in everybody's life. Maybe it's only a once a year experience for you. When that happens, choose the good ones. I'm going to put it in my podcast details. And Prosecco, it's definitely an everyday wine, so enjoy that. To close this out, I am not a life coach. I'm not a consultant. I produce this podcast on a weekly basis globally to enhance people's lives with three easy topics. Love for my listeners to enroll in Mary's or Matt's six week program, which is uh, easily accessed through their free masterclass on my website. And of course, that's my new career, so I get paid. Merci.